have run um, a senior associate at CPI, which is the Centre for Public Impact. We are a not-for-profit um, based in the UK, and our mission is to help public sector organisations listen, learn and adapt to tackle complex challenges. Um, today's session is about sharing power at the UK national government level, and this is a topic that we have always been interested in, but we think it's particularly relevant today in the crisis of coronavirus. I think the caveat for this session is that we're not going to give you any definitive answers on what the role of central government should be in sharing power, but we hope to open up a conversation about how we might reimagine the role of central government at this time, and perhaps give you some hope that um, this is a good time to do that reimagining. So our take on human learning systems um, is that there are different choices that governments face when managing public services. And we created some cards to show this, which I hope I was, I was able to show you in person, uh, but you'll get them on a slide. So traditionally governments have relied on a set of cards on the left. Um, so this is around creating vertical hierarchies, managing that top-down targets, focusing on what works uh, as an absolute claim and focusing on process and so seeing relationships as transactional. But I think our research has shown that governments are increasingly experimenting with a set of cards on the right and that's certainly more so at the local level but we're starting to see that at the national level as well. And the cards that you see on the right are really in line with the human learning systems philosophy so they're about subsidiarity, evolving power, they are about redefining governance so that it's not a top-down relationship but it's more of a conversation among equals and they are about learning continuously and experimenting in the local context rather than focusing on what works as an absolute claim and about strengthening relationships. So in general the set of cards on the left uh, centralizes power while the set of cards on the right is more about sharing power. And I'm not saying that one set of cards is better than the other. For some things, one set of cards may be just fine, but in other circumstances, the other set of cards may be better. So I think it's fair to say that in the coronavirus crisis so far, the UK national government has been mainly relying on ways of working that centralized power. So the set of cards on the left. The crisis has just begun. We are in what we call the fight stage because a lot of society's resources are dedicated to literally fighting a deadly virus. Um, and there will be more stages we can, which we can discuss later, but our observation is that so far it's been quite centralized. So for example, there has been a hierarchy in the spokesperson with a focus on the cabinet level. There have been targets set by central government, for example, for testing. And what works was very important at the beginning with the herd immunity theory, which soon the government realized wasn't going to work because what we have here is something that is in some ways unprecedented so there are limitations to what you can learn from what works and finally it's fair to say that the relationship between the state and people right now can feel a bit transactional because right now we're focused on survival applying for schemes universal credit and so on so these are just some observations and command and control and centralization of power may be welcome at this stage of the crisis where we need decisive action um, and a sense of security across the nation. But the question is how long national government is going to hang on to that? And this is what we're seeing in tension. Um, centralized power can make it harder to mobilize resources. And I think that's something that we're seeing, for example, with the National Health Service Initiative, which so a huge number of registrations across the nation but mobilization for that has been pretty slow because it's hard to marshal centrally where resources are most needed at what time. Another example here would be the testing where Public Health England has gone for a centralized um, approach rather than relying on the laboratories across the UK. Also, we're seeing that decentralized systems of power could be more effective at distributing resources, but it's definitely too early to say and to make a full assessment. But countries like Germany and Switzerland that are by nature uh, more decentralized in terms of how they distribute power have been 
more effective at testing, for example, and also at applying more bespoke solutions for their regions. For example, in Germany, they will be reopening schools, but not all regions have decided to follow that. This is not to say that all centrally run schemes are, um, do not work. In fact, the UK government work schemes have been praised international, internationally. So for, perhaps for some things, centralized power is working. But a final observation is that regardless of whether power is centralized or not, whether it is exercised effectively seems to depend on whether there is trust in government and whether there are strong feedback loops. We think that's very important. Feedback loops between people, regions and national government. So with so many lessons happening real time about the implications of where power sits in a government system in this crisis, there is a lot of potential to reimagine what the role of the UK national government and its role in its bodies, including regulators, for example, should be in reshaping power as we recover from this crisis. And so this, what you have here, is the question that I would like to trigger your imagination with today. And we'll go back to that um, in the breakout. But I think for now, just to provide you with some inspiration of what roles national governments could play in sharing power as we uh, move in the next stages of the crisis. I'm just going to share some examples from some research that we carried out recently for a central government department where we looked at how national governments abroad have shared power during crisis and this was specifically after the 2008 financial crisis and I'm just, I'm not going to have time to go into these in depth, but in all of these cases, we see national governments relying more on the other set of cards that I showed at the beginning, which is around sharing power. In Sweden, after the 2008 crisis, the national government decided to assign existing governors or elected politicians with the role of crisis recovery regional coordinators. And they gave them the power and autonomy to create local missions and encourage inclusive growth. In Busan, which is the South Korea's second largest city, which was hit hard by the financial crisis, um, the national government facilitated the creation of a regional innovation committee. And this is made up of representatives from civil society, metropolitan government, local businesses, the local university, and the role of this committee is for these different members to hold themselves to account for achieving a joint recovery strategy from a crisis. And then finally, uh, the West Philadelphia Skills Initiative um, in the US, this was a bespoke workforce development program. It was developed by an alliance of local businesses that aim to match job seeking residents um, with uh, local businesses. And this was a program that was partially funded by an innovation fund of the US federal government. So these were quick examples. And in all of these examples, national government did share power in some way. And they played different roles, either as funders or facilitators or coordinators. But in either case, um, they created the conditions for good recovery. And they ended up not being one-off initiatives, but actually being long-lasting mechanisms. So while we cannot accept, accept for this change to happen in the UK on its own, as the tendency to hold onto power may be strong after this phase of the crisis, there is value in thinking about what role we as our organizations uh, who do practice different ways of working uh, and who do believe in the power of human learning systems can play in creating a more enabling and empowered Britain. And these are just some quick ideas, but that's where I really want to hear from you of things we could do. So, for example, in a fight stage where we're at now, we're seeing public services organizations adapting so quickly and working cross silos in a matter of days. And we think in this phase, it's important to capture what is happening and amplify it. And that's something that we at CPI can help with. We're trying to amplify stories. In the recovery stage, um, that's where it will be important to do some deeper listening and learning, especially with citizens who have fallen the hardest during the crisis. And that's where we can also bring national government and regulators into the conversation and start the conversation about the future that we want to have. 
And then finally, in the rebuild phase, that's when we can influence uh, change. And that's where the feedback loops that we'll have established in the recover stage can become long lasting mechanisms. So these are just some initial thoughts. And I think my presentation is ending here. But this topic around how to share power um, is something that we are currently exploring uh, at CPI and we want to play a role in facilitating this conversation with central government and regulators. Um, so do pick up this conversation with us even after this webinar and reach out to us for uh, different things that we're doing right now, including thinking about sharing power in children's social care, doing crisis engagement with traumatized communities, and check out our Medium account. There are a couple of pieces there that relate to what I just talked about. Thank you.